the board keep telling me that I can have an extra coach and then every time I, I try and hire someone to be that extra coach, they just cancel it and say we don't have enough money. Make your minds up. Hello everyone and welcome back to more Careering Onwards with me, Mr. Grant 2 and Cambridge United is where we're at. It's where we started our journey and it's where we are continuing on. And it's continuing to be really very good in terms of overall performance. Uh, since last time it's been a little bit hit and miss. I mean, there were three defeats in there, which is more than we've had in the entirety of, uh, of uh, you know, large stretches of the season. So you're yeah, not particularly good, but obviously the two wins last time against Northampton and MK Dons, very, very good. But since then, less good. Three defeats, one draw, all of which were just incredibly frustrating, starting off with a 3-2 defeat to Wimbledon, AFC Wimbledon. Um, yeah, just, just, I don't know, they just were amazing. We took the lead and then they just completely obliterated us in a spell either side of the half. They scored late on as well. We then got a consolation back and it's just, yeah, not good. And then most frustratingly of all, a 1-1 draw with Accrington Stanley. They were bottom of the league. They still are bottom of the league. And well, yeah, just the goal from uh, from Coro here. I mean, it, it was a beautiful assist, absolutely stunning assist. Unfortunately, the assist was from George Marius, who just put an absolutely beautiful ball into him. He was in an offside position, but because the ball came from Maris, I assume that that meant that the goal counted. We scored from Adam, Adam Ida penalty, and, well, I mean, that was it. It was just a 1-1 draw. Not as bad as a defeat, but not good. We then bounced back, though, with a 1-0 win against Coventry. Adam Ida getting the sole goal in that one. Then we had the FA Cup third round, which I wasn't expecting much from against Championship Swansea City, but... It was a win. It was a brilliant performance. Complete domination from start to finish. The goal came in the 83rd minute. It was a lovely strike from George Maris after Connor Roberts was sent off on the 74th minute. And well, I mean, I really didn't expect much from that. But we're through to the fourth round. We'll be playing Oxford United. And that's going to be the first game we're playing today. It's an away game. I'm risking it. But I'm risking it in the, in the hope of a big reward of a fifth round tie. So buoyed on by that excellent performance, I was expecting to have a couple of great wins in the following two games we played Cheltenham Town away from home we we didn't win um it was a 3-1 defeat Shaquille Colthurst getting himself a hat-trick his first three goals for the club first three goals of the season obviously with finishing of 10 that's what you would expect and then most disappointingly of all the absolute epitome the absolute definition of being FM'd a 1-0 defeat to Charlton Athletic at home in the EFL Trophy third round. We will not be winning it this season. I don't know what happened. They scored in the seventh minute. It was their only shot on target. One of only three shots they had in the whole game. We had considerably more, including a penalty from Adam Ida that was missed. And, well, yeah. Since then, though, two straight wins. Um, not particularly great performances, but wins nevertheless. A 1-0 against Bristol Rovers away from home, which is relatively shocking. Adam Ida getting a penalty and then a 2-1 win against Blackpool. This was a pretty important game. They were going very well. Lloyd-Jones and Adam Ida getting the goals in that one. So much like last season, a little bit of a, a dip, especially away from home in the sort of after Christmas. Everyone's a bit sort of tired, a bit sluggish, that kind of thing. But unlike last season, you may have noticed... Adam Ida has not just decided to go on strike for two to three months of the season. No, far from it. He has been absolutely sensational. In fact, 23 goals in 27 games in the league, 25 overall. It's only January. It, it's only January. He's been already better than last season. And if we just have a look at how that shapes up against the rest of the league, well, it's not really much of a competition. 23 goals. He leads the way by a margin of 12 over Ivan Tony, I think he will be very frustrated if he doesn't end up winning the Golden Boot. And then how that all shakes up in terms of the table, well, it's it's tight. It's tight. We're second. We're level on games played with Charlton above us, but two points behind them. Uh, five points back are Fleetwood, who've actually played a game more than us, which is it's pretty good. I mean, it's it's just sort of... Last season, we had the luxury of having third place being an automatic promotion space. Obviously, that's not the case here. I'm just thinking about the fact that I've done four full seasons of FM20 on YouTube so far, and every single one of them has ended with us finishing in third place. And if that happens this year, it's going to be the playoffs for us, which wouldn't... You, we, we just got promoted, so you can't say that's bad, but... 
when you've been in the automatic spots since literally the first game of the season, you kind of really want that to continue. But a break from that first of all chance for some more success. We're in the fourth round of the FA Cup, um, which is which is I mean further than we've got last season, further than we've done um, so far. And what is Cambridge's record in the FA Cup? What's the best they've ever done? I don't know. Well, maybe we've already done it. Oh, that's not going to tell us. What about if we go on FA Cup here? And that's just for just for the game game so far. I don't think it's gonna don't think it's gonna tell us. Well, I mean, we're doing quite well. Whatever happens, we'll, we'll have to see if anything interesting comes up once we get through this round. If indeed we do, which is of course not certain. We've already lost to Oxford at the Kassam Stadium this season, so I would probably say we're not favourites. But the team then for this one is going to be the full strength side. We are back to full strength for at least the first five minutes of the game. You would hope Callum Burton is going to be in goal. Field, Boone, Jones and Brown is the defence. Dixon, Bonner, Adiemi and Maris the midfield with Ferry on the left. Politic on the right and Adam Ida up front. The only issue I'm kind of having is maybe we play Josh Ruffles instead of Tom Adiemi. Maybe even Jason Lowe. He's very upset and wants to leave. Adiemi's been pretty decent though. He's, he's kind of dropped off a little bit. But he's relatively consistent, and I don't think I want to upset the balance of the midfield, given the partnership that these three guys have got at this stage. So it's not going to be easy at all. Cameron Brannigan in the Oxford midfield is a very decent player. He's attracting quite a lot of interest in real life from uh, some top-tier sides. And, well, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not a game that I'm absolutely desperate to win. I've told them I expect them to win, and then some of them are confused and not happy about that, which is, that's a great start, isn't it? Just go out there and, and just confuse the opposition. If we can win this, it's good, uh, but it's not as important as the league. But to get through to the fifth round of the FA Cup would be very, very nice, and that's not nearly a disaster. A start, Hansen fires wide. Our away form's not been a disaster. We have had a couple of wins away from the Abbey Stadium, and in fact, we've had a couple of defeats at home, so I'm not as concerned as I was last season with the prospect of an away game where it just reached a point of just comically bad bad performances. It's been all Oxford so far in terms of highlights, though. Fosu's in, he's hit the bar. He was offside, but, I mean, yeah, we need to wake up a little bit. Of course, we could just take him to a replay and then, then win the replay, but I'm not sure if replays are actually in the fourth round anymore. I'm not sure. It might be next season when, uh, when, they, get, when they get scrapped. Of course, we might not even get to that stage because Oxford coming forwards again. Brannigan plays it forward, cut out by James Brannell, and that Adam Ida can run on. We've hyped him up. He's having a cracking season. Good opportunity for him, but not on that occasion. Conrad from Barry McKay, knocked on by Moore, just wide of the post. They are definitely dominating this one. We've had more shots on target. We've not really seen many of them. The best chances have definitely been going Oxford's way. I'll take off Will Ferry for Otis Khan. I just realised I should have put Sam Greenwood on the bench because I, I can't have him on the bench for league games because we don't, we have too many lone players. I forget to just put him on the bench in cup matches where he can, where he's not he's not barred from being on there. We're coming forward though. Addy Amy finds Dixon Bonnet. Lovely ball. Well, it was a lovely ball from him. Fortunately, it went to Oxford. Uh, and they're coming forwards. Hansen on the right to Brannigan, who's not done much so far. And he's given the ball away to Adam Ida, who's beaten one. Kind of couldn't really get much further than that. He's given Dennis Politic the ball and he drags his shot wide. Well, time is pretty much gone here. I'm going to have to take Adam Ider off because he's a bit nervous and uh, clearly got a bit of stage fright. And we'll bring on Josh Ruffles as well, who is the, this is his former club. I probably should have started him against his former club. That always works. That does always work. And it's nil nil. And well, it's uh, it's not going to extra time from the looks of it. Thank goodness for that. I, I've had enough of that. It will be a replay though, which is unfortunate because our fixture list is a little bit tightly packed anyway. But at least we live to fight another day. And when is that replay going to come in? Start of February, just before the match against Charlton Athletic. Absolutely brilliant. Never mind that though, we will be in the draw for the fifth round, even if we don't actually get there. It is of course the January transfer window. I don't think there's going to be much going on in terms of players coming in or indeed players going out. Luke Hallant's move to Burton Albion has gone through, which has solved our our transfer embargo issues. We're not. We're no longer failing FFP, which is nice. But the the amount of wiggle room we have in the budget is so minimal. There's not really much point in bringing anyone in unless we can get someone in online without paying any of their wages, really. And there isn't really anyone that is uh, going to qualify for that. Would that would be a much of an improvement? 
obviously if someone does end up going out then we'll have to replace them but I don't think that's going to happen we did receive a bid from QPR for Leon Davis but he he's been persuaded to stay it wasn't a very good bid anyway but now we are going to play Hull City in what is already my 100th game in management fantastic obviously that's been been bumped up a bit by Venezuela uh, our CV and our, our biography still looking a little bit sparse for some reason just it's not, it's not mentioning the fact that we won promotion with Cambridge I mean we didn't win the title obviously but we got promoted that really should really should be in there well, we might not actually get there, but who who would be our fifth round opponent, hypothetically speaking, if we did get past Oxford? Not Liverpool or Manchester City, that's a big one. Avoided them, uh, avoid Manchester United as well. Well, it would be Sheffield United, who are still in the Premier League, or Preston, which is not quite the money-spinning tie, but, uh, I mean, you know, an interesting one nevertheless. Arsenal potentially playing Spurs as well. But let's celebrate the milestone of 100 games as a manager, hopefully with a win here against Hull City. Going to keep the team the same for this one. We could bring in Josh Ruffles maybe, um, but I think, I think we're going to stick with these guys. They've done, I mean, they've done most of the work this season. Obviously, about three of them are going to get injured in the first 10 minutes or so of the game, and then another one later on. So we, we end the game with 10 men, calling it now, but we'll, we'll give it a go here against Hull. Um, I mean, they don't really have well, too many top uh, top players anymore being down in uh, down in League One. Obviously, Jared Bowen has long since moved on. He's at Southampton now, but still going to pose a threat. They're in seventh place, and, well, we're going to have to be on our game to beat them today, but I, f I fully expect you to win. I do. I, I mean, I don't, really, but you got you got to trick them. you got to kid them into thinking. Well, our cup exploits have, have meant that we've now actually got a game in hand over Charlton. So, I mean, they won their game that we didn't play when we didn't play. So, it's not not ideal. Anyway, early chance. Adam Ida, with an absolute sitter, says the text commentary, doesn't convert this time. And the first half's rapidly disappearing. Chance now for Hull, though. George Honeyman puts a corner in, and uh, well, it's cleared off the line. Two very good chances for both sides, but no goals at the break. I've been getting a bit negative with them recently, given the poor performances in, in some of these games, given given how well we've been doing. So let's be positive today. Well done. I'm, I'm pleased with the performance. We have had more shots on target, um, but I would like to see a little bit more in terms of in terms of goals. Adam Ida's getting a bit camera shy today. We bigged him up. He's had such a phenomenal season. No goals so far today. Not particularly good performances. Dennis Politic, though, what a ball that was from Tom Field. We, we re he, He's been a bit... A little bit injury prone. We in the some of the losses coincided with him being out, and that is that's why we missed him. What a pass from him and Politic with a dinked header past the goalkeeper, and we have got the breakthrough just before the hour mark. Well, Charlton take the lead in their game. MK Dons take the lead as well. Charlton actually playing Fleetwood, so that's uh, that's a massive, massive game. I think I read that right, uh, but time is going away here. And I'm not. I've not made any changes. I'm not going to make any changes. Fleetwood equalised against Charlton, which is huge. Full time here. We'll see. We'll wait and see if that result stayed the same. We have won. Not the the most sort of massive amount of highlights in that one, uh, but uh, we we've, we've done the job. We've done the job. It's another excellent win for us. And indeed, MK Dons do win the bitter bitter Wimbledon derby. But Fleetwood and Charlton is confirmed as a draw which means with the game in hand that we do have then we could theoretically theoretically go level on points with Charlton and potentially above them if goal difference goes in our favor it's a big if but it's possible and with some of the other teams tripping up the gap now back to third place is seven points with that game in hand that could be pretty pretty significant so there we are then not too bad at all it's it's going relatively well don't want to we're not going to count our chickens don't want to get our hopes up uh, next time and we we could come back for oxford united and charlton the replay against oxford and then well a top of the table clash with charlton i mean maybe maybe we should do that i'm not too sure though i would like to go a little bit further i'm thinking more sort of the rochdale fleet with time go through the whole of february see how things are shaping up with the running towards the end of the season and then come back maybe for a couple of episodes towards the end if things are getting a little bit dicey. I don't know. I mean, if we get past Oxford, then we've got another FA Cup game to contend with as well. 
We'll see how things go, but thank you very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next one. Leave a like if you enjoyed the episode as well, and I'll see you next time.